Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophie, I am the Midwest Magician, and we are continuing with day seven of the 12 Days of Yule Challenge created by Ivy the Occultist. And today's prompt is connecting with your land. So I figured I would give you guys a backyard tour of all of our garden beds, the different things that I do to give offerings to the land, and uh, some cool stuff that we're working on on the side. So if that sounds interesting to you, please go ahead and continue watching. So I think the first thing I'm going to show you is at the other side of my yard. And I, I haven't picked up, There's we have two dogs and I have not come out here since it's been cold to pick anything up. So I have to look at the ground while I walk. But the first thing that I wanted to show you guys is our mushroom logs. So we tried making three mushroom logs a while ago and those are over here. They did not work, so that was a huge bummer. I don't really know what to do with the logs. Oh, is there mushrooms growing? Oh my gosh. I think there is. There's, uh, it looks like maybe some shiitake is growing. <gasps> wow, there's some here too. Maybe they did work, and it just hasn't been damp enough. We inoculated those logs, I think like last April maybe, and then we inoculated two more logs in October. So let me zoom in on those for you so you can take a look. Okay, so this is one of the ones we inoculated. I believe it's either supposed to be shiitake or lion's mane. However, zooming in on this, it kind of looks like turkey tail to me. So I don't know why those would be growing unless somehow the wood already had those um, mycelium already in it but we've been checking these for a while and we have not seen anything. So it's really exciting to see some mushrooms. Here is some more turkey tail that we have growing on this log. It is insane. It's really old though. So I don't think it's something that we're going to end up using. We got this log for free on Facebook marketplace and I've really enjoyed watching all of the mushrooms grow. And this is the last log that we inoculated, again, either with shiitake or lion's mane, but it's really looking like turkey tail growing, which is beautiful, but uh, I'm a little bit afraid to eat something that I did not personally inoculate. So that's how that's going. Uh, we also have our compost bin right here. This is where all of our black gold is made. So we have one side that we fill, this side is waiting, and once we empty the side, we swap it. So all of that goes into our garden, and I will take you over to the beds right now. We got kind of a special treat this year. Today is the 26th. So yesterday in the Midwest, in Illinois specifically, it was like 60 degrees. So I've never had such a warm Christmas, and uh, it's kind of a treat, to be honest with you. Today it's a little bit chillier, but I wouldn't by any means call it cold. It's like, I think it's 40 today. But let me go ahead, I'll take you through our garden beds and I'll talk to you about how I like to give offerings to them in the springtime. So these are our three garden beds that we had last year. We had all of our cruciferous vegetables in here. So it was mostly cabbage and broccoli. However, those did not do well at all. <laughs> the cabbage moths got to them and laid their eggs everywhere. And it was a disaster. They ate holes in everything. There was poop on everything. I did not realize how irritating cabbage moths are. In this bed, I had two chamomile plants and I had a huge lemongrass plant and that was basically everything in those two beds. I think this year, what we're going to end up doing to prevent the cabbage moths is drilling holes all along here and all along the other side and then putting netting up so that whenever we need to, we can take it off, but we can, you know, put it back on as soon as we're done to eliminate any moth activity. I think we're also gonna really rely heavily on more companion planting just to keep the destructive bugs away. 
this bed was really successful only when we stopped watering it. <laughs> so everything in here was all peppers and arugula. Our arugula did really well and we planted way too much of that. We did not know how much we were planting when we planted it. The peppers did really well into the fall. The first frost kind of ended up killing them, but the whole bed was peppers. We also learned not to plant jalapenos next to your bell peppers because it will make your jalapenos sweet and not spicy. This bed we also had cruciferous vegetables. It was primarily kale in here and then we also had beets and radishes. And these two beds, we, we had a lot of fails last year unfortunately. This bed here was all of our cucumbers and squash and unfortunately the squash beetles and cucumber beetles got to both of them. So we're really gonna utilize um, also neem oil, which is natural and they do not like that. So we're gonna come out here and spray neem oil and probably start netting or hammocking any cucumbers and squash that we end up getting. And then this bed was mostly just herbs. I had rosemary, I had lemon balm, bee balm, and I'm not sure what else, there was something else, but I pulled all of that out because I did not realize that lemon balm was a mint. So if you know anything about planting mint, you know that it will go everywhere and kill everything around it. So I pulled that out and we're not gonna deal with that anymore. We ended up building two more beds and then over here, we're going to do a huge L-shaped bed. And we haven't quite planned out what's going to go in what just yet, but I'm very excited to get started on that. And it being warm right now makes me want to just start like immediately. But what I like to do in the spring is give my garden beds an offering. So this year, I think what I will be doing is giving each bed a rose quartz directly in the center, just to give it my love and gratitude because they will be feeding us throughout the summer. And then I have two silver leaf maples in the yard. So what I like to do, we have rose bushes back here. They are, I think, called tea roses. I take the tea roses and any flowers that I'm growing and I'll pick some and I'll just put it right around the bottom of my trees to thank them for their oxygen and thank them for all the life that they give us. We also have this silver leaf maple over here. And for this silver leaf maple, I usually have a chair and table set here that I'll come out and make tea and have tea with the tree. I just kind of touch it and thank it so much for everything that it does for us. Sometimes I get a little wigged out though because there's a lot of ants that will climb up here in the summer but I will also give this one offerings. I do usually the flowers here and then I'll leave any food offerings right up here because usually the squirrels will come and uh, take whatever offerings. I guess I could put some in here too, in this little spot, but I love to come out and hang out with my tree. And then Honestly, that's the most that we have going on right here. I think we might be planting raspberries over in this corner and then eventually where the fire pit is, we're going to have somebody come out and flag our yard just to make sure that we're not going to be digging and disrupting any public utilities. But uh, we're going to end up making that like concrete or concrete brick uh, fire area. And uh, my father-in-law does a lot of woodworking, so we're gonna have him make us some chairs to go around the fireplace. But yeah, for the most part, that's really how I connect with my land is through gardening and offerings. And I really, it just feels great. I mean, even being out here in the winter, it's one of my favorite things to do. Something that I started doing in the spring was coming out here and setting a timer for five minutes taking my shoes off and just standing in the grass for five minutes only with my bare feet on the earth. And it was like one of the most rejuvenating things ever. I wish I could do it right now, but it is so cold. I do not think I would make it. So 
that's really what we like to do. Sometimes too, we have a hammock and we'll hang it from this thing, this big pergola thing. And I'll just come out here in the spring and in the summer and just lay and enjoy the outdoors, enjoy my land. So that's the most of it. I am sorry this video is so short. Maybe I will insert a clip of me doing an offering to my trees. I'll go inside and prepare something. I apologize, this video is so not structured, but let's build our offering right now. So I have some cinnamon. I'm just gonna leave this, probably just stick it in the ground at the base of the tree so that no animals actually grab it. Not that I think they would, it's very like potent and smelly. So I have three bundles of three. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Shout out to my mother-in-law who sent these with our Christmas gifts. It was super awesome of her. Made the whole box smell amazing. I'm also going to offer some bird seed. Oh, and this is for like prosperity and warmth. I I didn't say that already. Offer some bird seed just so it's something nice for the nature that lives outside. We do a lot. Why not? It's about to get really cold here in the Midwest, so might as well get that. For the last thing, I did some Googling. Cuties. Squirrels are allowed to eat them, so I'm going to leave those. And I'm also going to leave the skins as well. And that is just for some energy. Energize our land. I think I'm going to do three. I peeled one off camera and then I realized, oh my gosh, I'm not filming and I probably should be. How are you guys enjoying this challenge? I'm personally really, really liking it. I'm having such a fun time filming every day. I kind of have fallen a little bit behind. I was like two days ahead at the beginning and then the holidays happened and the holidays were holiday in. So I got slowed down on my videos a little bit, but I am so excited to be able to go connect with nature and that gave me an excuse to go outside today so thank you ivy for that okay this is the last one and then i think you know what i talked about doing the rose quartz in the garden and i think i'm just gonna go ahead and do it maybe i'll do a time lapse you don't have to like sit and watch me walk from bed to bed but you can on like a very fast speed so maybe that's what we'll do. I want to eat this so bad. It smells amazing. Okay. Here it is, our offering. It looks amazing. Hopefully our land likes it. I'm going to go ahead and grab some rose quartz for the garden and I will see you outside. Okay, I'm outside. I have 10 rose quartz that I'm going to put in my buds right now and then I'll go and give my trees their offerings. So let's do that now. So I filmed myself doing the rose quartz in each bed and I did, since my beds are kind of cut in half, I did one in the center of each half to represent like the heart of the garden. However, playing back the footage to myself it's literally just a video, like I have it set up at all the beds and it's just me walking from bed to bed and it's just my butt. Like I'm just bending over, it's just my butt. So I'm not gonna include that footage. Just trust and believe that I did <laughs> the rose quartz in the beds. But I will bring you with me right now to do the offerings around the trees.
I promise eventually my shots will be a lot better than just my feet, but the offering was made. I left some cuties up in the notches that I was talking about earlier. I really appreciate it if you made it this far in the video. Thank you for watching my unscripted impromptu connecting with nature vlog. And I will see you guys tomorrow for day eight. We're halfway there. We're more than halfway there. How crazy. What am I going to do when this is over? All right, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.